In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can be able to create our first durable function in C Sharp in Visual Studio. So last video, I already talked about what is durable functions and the durable functions is an extension of Azure functions. And we can basically write stateful application and we can also write long running orchestrations using durable function. And we can also call another function synchronously and asynchronously using durable function. So if you haven't checked out my last video, I highly recommend to check out that one before checking out how we can be able to create a Drupal function in Visual Studio. To get started, what we're going to do is we're going to first make sure that our prerequisites are completed, right? So make sure that we have our Visual Studio 2019 is installed. And we also want to make sure that Azure development workload is also installed. So you can always open your Visual Studio installer to install the Azure development workload. And once we have that, right, we also want to make sure we're going to have our Azure account created as well. And what's going to happen now is we're going to create our function, right? Right, we're going to create a function app project. So we click on create app function project and uh, we're going to select function or in this case, Azure function. In this case, I already have that. You can also search it here for Azure function right here. And then what's going to happen now is I'm going to give the project a name. In this case, the name is going to be durable function. And uh, once that's created, we're going to set it as empty and then we're going to select storage emulator. We're going to click on create and this will basically create the project. And then what's going to happen now is once the project is created, right, we're basically creating an empty function application. What was going to happen now is we're going to create a function. So to add functions to the app, what we're going to do is we're going to hover over the project and we're going to click on add new item. We can also click on the new Azure function and then we can just basically double click on Azure function and we can give it a name. So in this case, let's call it hello orchestration.cs, right? So for example, like that, and then we're going to double click on Azure function and uh, we can basically select durable functions orchestration and then we're going to add and this will basically add durable function you can see here we have three functions right so a new durable function is added to the app and then you can see that durable function is a simple function chaining example with the following methods so you can see here we have three functions right or three methods so one is run orchestrator in this case, manage the durable orchestration. So basically what happened is that the HTTP start, which handles the events, it takes the request. And then what's going to happen that is that we're going to start the instance of orchestration. In this case, it's going to be the hello orchestration. In this case, is this one right here, hello orchestration. And then once this start this orchestration, in this case, the run orchestrator, it basically call the activity function. So you can see here, we have the context, we have the outputs replace hello with the name of your durable activity function. So in this case, you can see here, we have our activity function, which is hello orchestration, hello. So in this case, we pass in this name and then you can see here, we have log information, which log the data and it basically returns hello this name. And then we just add it to the output list. And then we basically call it three times and we're adding that to the list of string. And then the output is an array of string or list of string. And then once we return that, you can see we're basically return that here. To test the application or test the function locally, I just press F5 in local in Visual Studio. And once it press F5, if prompt, accept the request from Visual Studio to download and install Azure function core CLI, so the command line interface tools. I also need to enable firewall exception so that the tools can handle HTTP uh, requests. And then once it will prompt, right, it will prompt in any second. What's going to happen is that I will basically take this URL, which is URL of my function, and then we can basically test it in the browser to see the output. We have our application started it, or in this case, once we press F5, you can see it give us a URL, which we can test it locally. Now let's try to test it, right? So if we were to copy the link that's provided in the command line and then try to paste it here, you can see we have a couple links, or in this case, JSON data provider. So you can see here, we can get a status query and also we can send events we can terminate we can also restart so you can see here we have a lot of endpoints that we can call so if i were to call this one and i think of course you can see we have the name we're trying to get the status and you can see if we were to look at the runtime status is already completed and we already saw that in the command line as well and then here's the instance id the outputs, the created time, the last updated time. So you can see here that basically this is our status, our data. Okay. So once we were able to test it in locally, what we're going to do is we're going to do shift five in visual studio, and this will stop. And what we can do is that after we have verified that the function runs correctly on local machine, it's time to publish the project to Azure. So to publish the project to Azure, we must have a function app in the Azure subscription before you can publish 
your project. You can create a function app right from Visual Studio. So in this case, inside the Solution Explorer, we're going to right click and we're going to click on Publish. Click on Publish and in Targets, select Azure and then Nest. Okay, so Targets, Azure. For a specific target, choose Azure Function App Windows, okay, which creates a function app that runs on Windows. So in Function Instance, choose create a new Azure function. So here you can see we have our resource group and then what we're going to click on new. Okay. So for the subscription, you can see here for the name, you can see, I basically have a global unique name. And then for the subscription name, you can see the subscription name, the resource consumption, location, the storage, and then I click on create. Okay. So once it's done, so back in the function instance, make sure that run from package file is checked. So your function is deployed using zip deploy with run from package, which is recommended deploy method for your functions project since it's better for performance. So in this case, you can see we have our function created there and uh, we have everything selected. So we're running from the package file. We're just going to click on finish and uh, select finish. And on the publish page, select publish to the deployed package. Okay. So in this case, this is the publish button, right? So we're going to publish to deploy the package containing your project files to your new function app in Azure. So it clicks here. So after the deployment completes, there's going to be a root URL of your function app in Azure is shown in the publish tab. So we're just going to click on that. And then this will basically, we were able to test it in Azure. So you can see here in the publish tab, choose manage in cloud Explorer. This opens the new function app, Azure services in cloud Explorer. Okay, so once it's successfully published, we're going to copy the site, right? And we're going to test it here. So you can see that your functions 3.0 app is up and running. So try to learn more. Okay, let's maximize this. Let's go back. What we're going to do is right here, you can see test your application. So we're basically just going to copy this, right? And then we're going to paste it after that. And then let's run it. And you can see here, we have a couple URLs here, right? So since this is anonymous, uh, we don't need a API key or anything to make this call. So if I were to run this, you can see we have our task completed, right? So this is our output. We have our runtime status is completed. And in this case, what's going to happen is that since this is already completed it, let's go to Azure and let's destroy this. We have our Dribbble function app, right? So what we can do is that we can basically delete it like this, right? So we just have to type yes for confirm. So we're just gonna say yes. This will basically delete our Dribbble function app. If we click into it, eventually you can see this is deleted. Right?